At this time, we want to welcome everybody to Mount Moriah Baptist Church the way we do it down here.
church family and friends. We're so glad to have you here with this, us this morning for our worship service. I pray everyone had a Merry Christmas and a blessed Christmas and pray that you're looking forward to the new year and carrying this Christmas spirit on into that. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for bringing us through this year. Lord, you have been so good to us. You've been better to us than we have ourselves. Lord, we thank you for blessing Mount Moriah. Although we were far apart, but we were still together, and you have allowed us to hold on, Lord, to see what the end is going to be. We thank you, Lord, for this church family. We thank you, Lord, for the lives that you've allowed us to sustain. We thank you, Lord, for those that we have lost throughout this year. But, Lord, we thank you for loving us. Thank you, Lord. We ask you, Lord, to bless each and every person in this church. We ask you, Lord, to bless their families. We ask you, Lord, to look in on all those people who are suffering, all of your children who are suffering from illnesses as well as this COVID-19. Lord, we thank you for giving man the ability to develop a, vac a vaccine, not one but two. We thank you, Lord, and we pray that we are ready to receive the blessings that you have bestowed on us and that you will continue to bestow on us. Lord, keep us safe. Lord, look in on the first responders. Look in on the frontline workers in our grocery stores. Lord, please, Jesus, we ask you to bless the doctors and the nurses. All of those who are out there on the front line making sure that we are safe and that we can have food, we can have services, and we can get the medical attention that we need. Lord, our hospitals are full. Father God, give the doctors and the nurses some rest. Lord, please allow our teachers and children to be safe when they return to their schools. Bless your children, Lord, Lord, all over this beautiful world. We thank you, Lord, for what you've done. We thank you for what you are doing. And Lord, we thank you for what we know you're going to do. In Jesus' name, all of God's children say, Amen. The message today will be entitled What I Love Most About Christmas. And it's coming to us, the scripture is coming to us from Matthew 1 and 18. And I have decided in my research, I've decided to basically use scripture from the King James Version of the Bible as well as the New Life Application Study Bible. The King James Version of Matthew 1 and 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on the wise. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with the child of the Holy Ghost. The Life Application Study Bible reads as, this is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. 
But before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. I was privileged and honored to be asked by my pastor to bring the message today. When he asked me, I began to study and think about what my subject matter would be. Many thoughts came to mind. Then, as I was driving along and listening to the radio, the DJ asked his listeners to call him and tell him what they loved most about Christmas. That thought stuck in my mind. My mind began to wander over my many past Christmases and the many gifts that I received. I thought of the beautiful black Barbie doll I got. And I got her long before I heard of a Barbie doll. I should have said the beautiful black bride dog. I also thought of the long dangling earrings I received with the ten dollars attached during my teen years. All the gifts I received were great and I enjoyed each and every one of them. But as I continued to think about the subject, what I love most about Christmas, the one constant that stayed with me was my love for Jesus the Christ. The story of his birth how God was in the mix, and how he ordered every step in this union. Mary and Joseph were engaged to be married. During this time, a Jewish marriage involved three basic steps. First, the two families had to agree on the union. Second, a public announcement was made. At this point, the couple is pledged to each other. And the only way this relationship could be broken was through death or divorce. The third, the third step, the couple was married and they began to live together as husband and wife. Now, because Mary and Joseph was engaged, it appeared Mary had been unfaithful because Mary was with child. And this apparent unfaithfulness gave Joseph two options, divorce her or allow the authorities to, to stone her to death. Back then, as it is today, God always has another option. You see, God had already spoken to Mary. God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth. Luke 1 and 28 tells us, the angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored, the Lord is with you. See, this is what I love about Christmas. This story, this occurrence, this happening 
is what I love most about Christmas. Knowing that God can use anybody at any time to bring about his will. God could have brought Jesus into the world so many different ways. Jesus could have been born into wealth with untold riches. But God chose a young, poor female. Someone with all the characteristics that make her in her day appear to be unsuitable for God, to God for such a major task. But he chose Mary for one of the most important acts of obedience ever demanded of anyone. In Luke 1, 31 and 33, the angel told her, you will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord will give him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. This is what I love most about Christmas. I sometimes think of all that could have gone wrong, but as quickly as that thought comes to mind, I throw it out. Because I know that even today, if God brings you to it, he has already worked out a way to bring you through. Praise God. Okay, y'all. Now, I know Christmas Day is over. And although this is an occurrence that happened long ago, it is still one that is alive today. Yes, even today when we go through trials and tribulation, God is already there and knows how he's going to bring us through it. Do you believe? Do you have faith? Remember, God's word never fails. Now Joseph was a different story. He appears to have seen himself as the wrong one. The wrong one. Somebody that somebody had done something wrong to. This is what I love about Christmas. Even when we don't see any way out, God steps in and shows us what trust what faith, what knowing him and believing in him can do. Joseph was busy trying to figure out a way to end the engagement and not publicly embarrass Mary any more than necessary. He intended to divorce her quietly. Joseph was a good man, but he was a human being, and he was endowed with human goodness as well as human frailties. In a dream, God sent an angel to Joseph, and the angel told him not to worry, not to be afraid to take Mary as his wife. Matthew 1, 21 and 23, the angel told Joseph, she will give birth to a son, and you are going to give him the name Jesus. Same thing he told me. Because he will save his people from their sins. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Joseph woke up and did as God commanded. This is what I love most.
Ghost about Christmas. God is in control. God didn't send an angel to say, hey, you, or young man. When God sent his angel, he called Joseph by his name. When the angel called him, he said, Joseph, son of David. God knows my name. God knows your name. Ain't it good to know that God takes time and pays attention to us? This year of 2020, I found myself looking forward to Christmas with great anticipation. Oh yes, I'm grateful and thankful for the gifts I received from family and friends. But my great anticipation came from knowing my greatest gift was from God. And knowing that God is with us. No, not that he's with us today. Not that he's with us on Christmas Day but that my joy comes from knowing that God is with us every day. My, jo my joy comes from knowing God is bringing us through this thing called COVID-19. My joy comes in knowing that God is bringing us through this economic turn down. My joy comes from knowing that God is bringing us through this great racial unrest in this country. My joy comes in knowing that God is bringing us through this political strife. 2020 has seen all of us going through experiences, experiences we have never endured before. Unless you were born or around in 1918, we have never experienced a plague like this. Many of us have been afflicted with this virus. Or where our loved ones have transitioned due to this virus. We've had family and friends transition. And we've not been able to give the usual comfort and support. But during this Christmas season, God has enabled the scientists and the medical experts to develop not one, but two vaccines to combat this virus that has taken hold of God's children all over this beautiful, wonderful world he's given us. God has caused our national elected officials to finally come to an agreement to provide aid and help to those who are suffering through the loss of their, loss of their job, loss of housing, and an inability to provide food for their children and families. God has brought us through four years of ugly and hateful rhetoric that has caused the awakening of a sleeping giant in the black and brown community who now know their power, the power of their vote at the ballot box. That power has resulted in this nation finally getting a new leader, a leader who has empathy, and a leader who understands human pain and suffering. Christmas is celebrated on December 25th. Christmas comes seven days before the end of this.
this year or the beginning of the new year. Christmas usually finds us closing the books on an old year and opening the pages of a new year. I've heard many say, I'll be glad to see 2020 go by. We've had challenges this year. Many unusual and never before experienced challenges. The new year will see us enduring a carryover of some of these challenges of 2020 and 2021 will bring its own challenges. But as we leave this year behind and welcome to the new year, we must remember God is in control. We should wake up each morning with love in our hearts, joy in our spirits, and on our minds. We should carry ourselves like Christmas is every day of the year. Oh, life will be rough some days, but always know you're not in this alone. Remember the, Christ the, the spirit of Christmas, the birth of our Savior who lives in us. I have never heard this song sung, but I read the lyrics the other day, and it just said so much about Christmas and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. It says, in a moment, everything changed. On a silent night came the promised child. In a stable so humble and poor, unto us was born the Savior of the world. Love came down. Hope was found. A star lit the sky. The angels cried, glory. Light broke through the darkest night. Hope is a lie. Hope is a lie because love came down. What I love most about Christmas is knowing that Jesus the Christ was born and that my Lord and Savior lives in me and you. Praise God. I pray each of each one of you have had a joyous and blessed Christmas. I pray you had a Christmas of gratitude to the Lord for everything he has done, for all that he's doing right now, and what he will do for us in the future. What I like most about Christmas is that my Lord and Savior saw fit to care about us. My Lord and Savior saw fit to give his one and only son to absorb us of our sins so that we could have life and have it more abundantly. Christmas is every day. You wake up in the morning, you're able to open your eyes and say, thank you, Lord, it's Christmas. You're able to wake up in the morning and slam your legs over the bed and stand up, it's Christmas. What I love most about Christmas is that I've got love in my heart. I got joy in my spirit. I've got 
hope. Hope. Oh my God. God loves us. And I don't care where you read in the Bible. The one thing that God has always asked of us is to love and care for each other. It's Christmas, y'all. And Christmas is not one day. Because my God lives every day. Born on Christmas morning. Born in a manger to a lowly peasant girl. And a man who had to wait till God talked to him to tell him, make her your wife. Because what has happened to us, her was done, but done, excuse me, was done by the Holy Spirit. Know that you are blessed. Know that God is going to bring us through everything that's going on today. Know. Because I know what I love most about Christmas. Let us pray. Father God, we come to you today to ask you, thank you, to say thank you, Lord, and to ask you to keep on loving us. We thank you, Lord, for loving us as a dutiful parent before a disobedient and unruly child. Lord, you sent your one and only son to die for our sins so that we could have life and have it more abundantly. Thank you, Lord. Nobody but you. Nobody but you, Lord. And we thank you for caring about us. Thank you for the season of renewal. Let us renew our hearts. Let us renew our spirits. Let us take care of each other. Let us love each other. Father God, you're the best gift. You brought us and sent us the best that you had. What a gift. What a gift. Thank you, Lord, for allowing me to love your gift most of all. Thank you, Lord. Father, keep on blessing your children. Lord Jesus, look in on my right. Hold on to us, Lord. Hold on to us, Jesus. Keep us in your hand. Keep all of your children in your hands, Lord. Hold on, Jesus, to us. You do not let us go. We know. We stumble. We fall. But we are so grateful that you are there when we fall to help us rise again. You're there to pick us up. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. As we leave 2020 behind, Father God, let us know that you're moving into 2021 with us. And we can always call on you. And you will answer. Lord Jesus, we pray for the Sumter family, our pastor and his mother and uncles in the home mourning of their uncle Mo. Lord Jesus, we've had a lot of people that we know who have gone on to be with you. We thank you, Lord. We ask you to bless Miss Mary Smith and her family in the home of home going for her brother. And Jesus, if I have neglected to ask you to bless someone, Lord, please, Jesus, blame it on my head and not my heart. And Father God, we'll always give you the glory. 
because you allowed your son to be the reason for the season. And Lord, bless, let us allow the season of Christmas to last all year long because your son and you are with us all year long. Amen. Now, if any of you have heard anything today or in any of our pre previous virtual services, and you would like to join with this church of worship, you may go to our webpage and input your information and one of our deacons will be in touch with you. If you have enjoyed this service, this message, or any of our other messages, and you would like to make a contribution to the Mount Moriah Baptist Church, you can also go to our web page. We thank you for joining us today.
who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout the generations forever and ever. Amen.